सूत्र ट्वेंटी वन यथा रज गोपी का नाम अ ग्रेट एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द एग्जैक्ट नेचर ऑफ दिस डिवर्शन इज दैट ऑफ द गोपीज द खाउहड वुमेन ऑफ रज ऑल डिवर्टीज कंसिडर द गोपीज ऑफ रज द परफेक्ट रोल मॉडल्स ऑफ डिवर्शन एंड सेज नारद यूज दम एज द फाइनेस्ट एग्जैम्पलर्स ऑफ द डिवर्शन दट ही हैज कैरेक्टराइज इन द श्रीमद भागवतम Ten point forty four point fifteen, the women of Mathura state. The gopis are most fortunate, for their hearts dwell on Krishna constantly. With love in their hearts and trembling voices, they sing about him as they milk their cows, thresh grain, churn butter, care for the children of their households, clean and do their other chores. All good and auspicious things come to them due to their glorious state of mind. Mathura is a city in Uttar Pradesh, India, and it was Lord Krishna's maternal home. The great love of the gopis can be understood by the symptoms they showed when they heard the sound of Krishna's flute. The sound of Krishna's flute provoked the gopis' love for him and the desire to be with him. he had already brought their hearts under his sway and now he stole all fear hesitation self control and social obligations from their minds as soon as they heard the flute they began to act very strangely the gopis who had performed worship to get krishna as their husband started sneaking out of home without telling the other gopis they ran so fast that the earring swayed in their ears others had been milking cows but the moment they heard the sound of the flute they stopped and ran towards the sound some left milk on the stove and some left food cooking there some had been dressing themselves serving food to their families feeding milk to children or serving their husbands but they dropped everything to go and meet krishan other gopis were eating dinner while some were bathing getting dressed or touching up their eyeliner but they all dropped everything even the ones whose makeup and ornamentation was only half done their husbands brothers and other relatives tried to stop them and place obstacles in the path of their blessed love journey but krishna had captivated their hearts and minds they were so enthralled that nobody was able to stop them how could they succeed for the enchanter of the universe krishna had kidnapped their minds hearts and souls in trance by the song of the flute they refused to go home again but some of the gopis could not escape their houses they remained there with their eyes closed meditating upon him with great love and absorption shrimad bhagavatam 10.29.429 in the shrimad bhagavatam 10.47.61 uddhav a great devotee of the lord said blessed are the gopis of raj they have renounced their families which is very difficult to do and they have traded the path of piety for refuge at krishna's feet i wish to become a blade of grass a vine or a plant in vrindavan so that i may receive the dust of their lotus feet upon my head eternally lord krishna said to the gopis my dear gopis i shall never be able to repay you for all that you have done for me even if i try for a lifetime of the gods you have truly loved me breaking the chains of household life which is very difficult to do may your own wonderful actions be your reward shrimad bhagavatam 10.32.22 krishna continuously praises the gopis names and forms merge in the trances of meditating sages just as great rivers merge into the sea in the same way the gopis also lost all awareness of their bodies the world their families and the future in their constant thoughts of me 
Srimad Bhagavatam 11.12.12 The example of the sages in meditation is mentioned here only to illustrate concentration on a single object. The gopis simply loved Krishna and could not think of anything else. They cast off all obstacles that obstructed their concentration whilst they were remembering Krishna, cursing even their own eyelids for blinking and thus removing Krishna from their sight for a split second. From the Srimad Bhagavatam 10.30.43 The hearts of the gopis had become saturated with Krishna. They constantly thought only of him and spoke about him. Everything they did was for him. Krishna had permeated their every pore. Their souls were full of him. They only meditated on his magnificent deeds and sang his glories. They were so absorbed in him that they did not even remember their own bodies. How could they possibly think of home? If a person has a duty to perform, but due to some difficulty he cannot complete it, he simply gives up. But when Krishan disappeared from the Ras Mandal, the gopis were searching for Krishan everywhere, asking the vines, the trees, the deer if they had seen him. Still they could not find him anywhere. The Ras Mandal was a place where the divine dance was performed between Lord Krishan, Radha and the rest of the gopis. Yet the gopis did not return to their homes. Even though they could not find Krishan, their homes and families had been completely forgotten. The gopis became completely absorbed in the remembrance of Krishan only. It was as if they were possessed. Taking on the Lord's identity, they began imitating his activities and saying to one another, How graceful is my gait! How beautifully do I play the flute! Intoxicated in his love, they were not aware of what they were doing. They became so absorbed in the Lord that their natures changed and they forgot everything. As the gopis searched for Krishna, they only remembered his virtues and his pastimes with them, whereas usually people think mostly of their material comforts and are easily capable of forgetting devotion for the Lord. In the Vidag Madhav, the mother of sage Sandipani, Purnamasi, speaks to Nandi Mukhi. O oh Nandi, Radha's heart churns with great waves of intense love. Her actions are indescribable. All this is happening by the influence of the great hero of romantic love. How amazing! Sages meditate on him after traversing beyond the material worldly qualities and with great effort they establish him in their hearts. But this young lady is trying desperately to stop thinking about that same cushion so that she can concentrate on her household chores. How strange that she is trying to get him out of her heart, the same person whom the sages try desperately to capture in their hearts by intense spiritual practice and austerity. Here, Radha, the queen of the gopis, is so saturated with the love of the Lord that she is completely intoxicated with thoughts of him and she is unable to function in her household. Fearing that her family will chastise her, Radha desperately tries to remedy this, only to fail in her endeavour, making her more anxious. To experience a mere drop of this love, the sages had to perform austerities for thousands of years this is the splendor of the Lord's sacred love, and its attainment is a supreme goal of the soul. The love of the gopis is unique because it is constant, undiluted, and unconditional. For devotees, the gopis of Raj are the height, the very essence of pure love. Hence, sage Narad has used them as the topmost example.